Kia ora. Hello. This is part two covering my discussion of the chaperon and the hood. If you are interested in my research and construction of this, head over to part one where I discuss the fashion and textile history of the hood. If you are here to learn how to wear a chaperon, please stay. I'm still going to talk about history though. This is what I do, but I promise you'll get a tutorial on how to tie a chaperon. Remember, it's all about context, and here at Popula Urbanum, context is king. When constructing this hood, I had to keep in mind that this was being made uh, to be a chaperon. Looking at images of 14th century hoods, it is clear the face opening is not too wide, but they were depicting it as being tight and close to the face. Um, this makes sense to anyone who lives in a cold, windy climate like me, as a wide opening allows for cold air to whip around the face and ears, replacing the warm air inside the hood. For a chaperon to function, however, the face opening must be loose enough to allow the hood to be rolled up without being too tight on the head, because if it is too tight, you'll get a headache. If you've ever worn a hat that's too tight, you get a headache. Some of the issues of the hood is that it blocks your peripheral vision, see? Um, so however, this is fixed once you roll back the sides, uh, and you still maintain that warmth inside the hood. Uh, as we can see in these images, links will be below, um, that depictions of hoods appear to be of similar design, a closer fitting closure for the face, or as I like to call it, a face hole. In my opinion, it is important for the practicality of the garment, otherwise it fails to function to keep the head warm or dry, and it would fall off in vigorous exercise or wind. This is why modern garments often need a drawstring in the face to secure them close, otherwise they are flung off the head, much like my beloved raincoat is in strong winds. I know there is a fantastic video released a few years ago on how to wear your hood, However, what I'm trying to do here is share how to style a chaperon. So the first style we're going to talk about is the hood on the head. You see this depicted all through the 14th century. As I've said, I've, if you need any peripheral vision, you roll back the sides. You can pull your face back a little bit. Now, if you've got a long um, little pipe like I do, you can just wrap the little pipe around the throat. It secures it. The little pipe also is often tucked into the belt. Um, this is a piece of conspicuous consumption. Um, the purpose of having extra fabric says, I'm a wealthy person, I can afford extra fabric. The next styling here, obviously, we have is the hood um, about the shoulders. Often you will see someone wearing a hat at the same time. Um, and this is interesting because the hood now is a, is a garment um, in its own right and they're wearing a hat uh, separately. It's an interesting development. Let's move on to chaperons. One of the earliest depictions of the chaperon that I have seen is the hood on the head and not being tied up. This is most commonly by putting the face hole. There we go just over the head and you've got your what well, I'm going to refer to here as your shoulders and your little pipe free okay now my face hole is quite loose over my head and you just roll that up slightly You don't want to roll this up too much. And we see this being depicted. Now, a lot of the depictions often have a shorter little pipe. Now my, as I've said, my little pipe is very long. Um, and the intention of having this long is so I can tie the chaperone up in different styles. Uh, if I was to have a shorter sh uh, little pipe, um, I could just let this dangle free. However, longer little pipe, I need to do something with this, so I can just throw this around my neck like that. We've got the 
shoulders, hanging around the head. And that is a very common late 14th century style, so 1370s to 1380s. It's not tied up, it just sits on your head. Um, and for whatever reason, um, and I don't have the context, I don't, under, you know, I don't understand why they started doing this, but they've started doing this all the same. Uh, it looks quite jaunty, I do like this style. Moving on from this style, we start seeing some tied up fashions, I call them tied up styles or tied up fashions. Uh, and the next one we're going to look at requires a longer lira pipe. Uh, and you'll start seeing this in a later period, uh, say 1319, 1400, 1400 onwards. Um, and I'm just going to need to roll up my um, hood a little, my face hole a little more, should I say. And we don't want that to be too high. We want a nice gap here. Um, and when I say here, we're looking at where the lira pipe starts and where your face hole, um, your neck starts here. You don't want that to be too high because it makes it really quite difficult. I'll just get a little closer to the camera. It makes it quite difficult to reasonably and cleanly fold your hood. Okay? So, I'm going to swivel this around here for everyone to see. You want to fold this nice and cleanly okay and we'll just flick that over we bring that down to your roll and I'm just flicking the shoulders out of the way bring that roll and we want to make sure if we rotate that around more want to make sure that your roll is nice and flat because you don't want that to stick up too much it does it starts looking unsightly okay and we want to be able to pull our lira pipe under that flap okay and we're just rotating it around now normally you wouldn't need to do this this much. However, I'm just showing for purposes of the demonstration. Okay, and we're going to go around. We want to keep our lira pipe nice and tight. Now, once again, my lira pipe I have expressly cut to be nice and thick. It's double width. Okay, so I've folded it over, I've fed it through, I've put um, stab stitching through um, the seam to give it extra strength. Because the purpose of this um, hood is as a chaperon, so it's constructed to be quite robust for the purposes of sewing this up. Uh, for the purposes, I should say, of tying this up. So we've gone almost all the way around once. Just rotate it around for you so you can see. Okay, and we're just trying to keep it as close to the forehead as possible. Okay, pull that over again. Alright, now we're here. Give it a nice tight pull. We've got, so we're over the top of there. We don't want to be, so that's where the lira pipe starts. Okay, and we're over this big fold of fabric here. Now we want to just kind of Give it a nice pull and flatten it out so it's not too bulky. Okay. And what we're going to do, we're going to feed some fabric through there. Okay. Just like that. Give it a nice turn. We want to make sure that's as firm as possible. I'm going to turn that around to this side of my head. Yeah. I'm going to pull this back down over my forehead. 
We will do that there. To hide that, no, yeah, as I call it, an unseemly bulk. I'm going to try to just spread that out a little bit. And then from here, I've got this little dangly bit of litter pipe. Just going to jam it into here. And I don't want this pulling up like that. It looks unsightly because medieval people had a very acute sense of fashion. And I'll just splay that out like that. There we go. That should be firm on your head. However, there you go. You've got your dags on this side. You've got your uh, lyra pipe under your neck there. And if you want to flip it to have like a nice big um, sort of patch, uh, you know, like a, your lyra pipe standing up as well, you could flip it to the other side. However, then you've got this big knot on that side there. So I tend to just cover that up on that side so you don't see the unsightly knot. So that's another way you can tie your, your hood. Just straighten that up there. Uh, or as I said, flip it over there and you get that nice big um, flow of, of lyra pipe and the dagging over your face, which looks quite fetching. The next style we're going to discuss is the coxcomb. This one doesn't require as much folding, however, uh, it has a much more dramatic effect. So, what we need to do is, once again, make sure that our roll is not too high. We do rely on the space on either side for our uh, lyra pipe, and you are going to need a longer lyra pipe, although probably not as long as what I have, however, um, you're still going to need a longer lyra pipe. A short lyra pipe won't get this effect. What you will need to do, first thing you'll need to do is you'll need to rotate your uh, hood with your lyra pipe at the front and your shoulders at the back. And the first thing I do is I get my shoulders and I get them in a bunch and I roll them up. Okay, so they're in a rolled tube, the next thing I do is I just drop them back. This, I know they will unravel, but this is important. The next thing I do is I get my lyra pipe and I pull that up. Once again, we're going to make sure it's a nice flat fold. Okay. And every once in a while, I'm just going to make sure that roll there for that, the shoulders are still correct. And I'm just going to... Oh, it's falling off my head. There's a lot of folding and rolling that I've been doing between takes. <laughs> Let's pull this back down on my head. I'll just do a re-roll there. Okay, so I need to make sure, as I said, it's really hard to do this while on camera. It's the same again. That was the last one. We're pulling that around the head. Okay. Now, I want to make sure it is low on my brow as possible. Okay. And I want to be essentially folding that around on itself. Um, without pulling it off my head, yeah? Now I've got this end here. It's really, I do apologize, it's really hard for me to do this while rotating it around my head because it, what it's doing is pulling it off my head. But essentially, I've come to the end here and I'm just going to feed it in, tuck the end in there.
Yeah. Now I've got that rolled up part of the hood. And one of the reasons why we roll it up is to just get it out of the way. The other reason is the roll allows us to not have it. If we splay it out, I'll unroll it, I'll unfurl it you end up with this. And this is not the purpose of this um, this fashion. And you'll see the coxcomb bring the from the rear of the hood or the chaperon, you bring your shoulders and your dagging forward and, and over the eyes. You'll see this fashion very often in the beginning of the um, 14th century, or so should I say the beginning of the 15th century, um, and sort of really at the end of the um, 14th century. Um, in the beginning of the 15th century, you will also perhaps see a badge affixed to the hood uh, here. Um, and I suspect this m may be a badge used as a pin to fix it. So when I whip my head around, it's not flying my face. Um, I had a bit of an interesting conversation the other night about were they using uh, veil pins to hold these to their head um, or, you know, as, as a hat and they possibly could have been. So if you put a badge, and we often see a badge right here, which would be the perfect place if you didn't want this thing in your face put a badge here, you just badge it up, that would keep the dags out of my eyes. <laughs> but without it, they inevitably come to my eyes. However, put a badge here, pin it to the front of your, um, your roll, and then by doing that, you can take your chaperon off, and you've got a permanent hat. And I leave, I, I've, now I've uh, done this style, I, I now leave this, uh, this chaperon tied like this and I just put it on a hat rack tied like this. This is, this is my preferred method of wearing this hood now. Um, and I've only had it for a couple of days and I keep on putting it on. I'm pretty, pretty proud of uh, this hat. It's pretty cool. These are some of the ways that I have researched on how to wear a hood and I'm comfortable on um, sharing on how to to wear the hood. Um, this is based on my experience and and research. Obviously there was a video that went around a few years ago that people um, found really amusing. It was pretty good. Um, however, there are a plethora of ways to wear a hood and, and medieval people chose to wear their hood. Um, I know there was one way where you folded your hood up into a nice little bundle and you put it on top of your head and you head carried it. Uh, that would require a, you know, really good um, core strength to remain you're quite vertical, not to tip over and have your hood fall on the floor. Um, so really interesting ways that people uh, carry their hoods around. However, I'm not really uh, confident in sharing otherwise because I haven't practiced them or I haven't you know, researched on how perhaps to wear a hood or a chaperon and those methods. If you've got ways that you wear your hood, uh, please, I'd love to see them, share them, let's have a discussion, that'd be really awesome. Um, I'm hopefully um, going to be able to do some more reconstruction soon. I've got a couple of ideas. Uh, they're really big projects, so uh, we'll see how we go with that. Thank you very much for watching. If you have um, any insights about making hoods or other garments, please comment. Um, otherwise, please remember to stay safe, have fun, and keep reenacting.